we all do this with love and we all do this with acceptance and heart and I just just again I just want to thank you for participating in this because I know it's not an easy conversation to listen to but it's definitely one that needs to be had it's definitely one that needs to to be had in our community and I think we're just going to end with that and if anyone have any last minute things to say and then we'll just wrap up um that conversation you had with your uh, with your brother is something that I, for me, is just a reality. Um, I hate to say it like that, I guess. Um, I don't want to say it's survival mode, but it's just my my instinct. I need to be able to move throughout this world as best possible. Should I have to take these extra steps of saving receipts, saving my check stuff because I've cashed my check? Maybe I'm not near my bank. Or maybe this is a Bank of America check or something like that. I got to cash it. I got several hundred dollars in my account, in my pocket. I got to prove that this ain't drug money. I got to prove where I was, who I am all of the time. It's Not just that, but you, you know, I have black friends who say, I can't leave my house without someone knowing where I'm going before I get to point B. Because the fact that from point A and B, I can go missing, whether that's from another person who has a hidden agenda or whether that's from the cops. And I've heard so many, I, I lived in a little town called Lake Charles and it's very, it's like three and a half hours west near uh, Houston. And that town, people go missing and there have been prostitutes who've gone missing and nobody's identified the bodies because the cops were behind it the whole entire time. And it's, that's just sad that you have to do that. I'm hearing this stories from me is always just like I, I don't know why I'm surprised isn't the word but just how much I take for granted being able to walk and reach in my fucking pocket like I I'm not very good at speaking properly sometimes no i mean yeah, you good, sometimes, baby. yeah sometimes the most simple words translate the best and let me tell you that what you just said right there you're absolutely right emily because you know like i moved to new orleans for the very reason of being surrounded by a culture that was happy i never realized that until i moved here because i always saw people celebrating and i was wondering what are they celebrating and then I got down to it and I've seen this post everywhere and it says New Orleans would be nothing without black people. And they are 100% right because they know what it's like to have to stick together. They know what it's like to have to give somebody the shirt off your back because, you know, they see it, they hear it, they live it, they breathe it. And that's a very unfortunate Are you okay? Yeah, I'm. I'm just, yeah, just going over, just listening, and just going over just every, every kind of situation that I gotta kind of, kind of deal with. It, Thank I you guess, for sharing. Yeah. Uh, it's no problem. I guess I was raised. My parents were born in the fifties. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. they remember the, the signs. They remember all of that. I guess I was just looking at it. Just. I kind of look at it colder, like this is my reality. What can I change? What I can't change? What needs to be changed by the group? And then like where I'm at and what's my position in all of this? Because we can make it better, but it just, I can't make it better right now. So I have to live now. I got to make it, make it work now. And, it, and it's <laughs> like she said, she, like Emily said, it's like, you know, she doesn't have to think. She doesn't think about it. She doesn't think twice. It's like, the etiquette that I have to have is doubled down. Okay, I'm a firearm owner. I need to make sure that I follow up certain etiquette. Conversation goes a certain way, and I do certain things. I get pulled over. I take my firearm off of me. I stick it in the glove box, and that glove box is locked before that copy gets out the car half the time. And people who ride in cars are like, hey, you got to keep it on you because cars are a dangerous place to have. You know, so you can get attacked. That's a transitional space. 
But as a gun owner, I, I, part of me was like, no, I got I to gotta leave mine in the glove box, man, because if I don't, I, I don't want to have to tell him, hey, yeah, I have a firearm, then I have to get out the car, and then in between the transition of the car, if he has a lapse in training or something, you know, and it might be a good cop, and he might have, I don't know. And, and I understand that, because, I mean, I definitely, I have cops in my family. Like, I get that, but at the same time, it's, when it comes to training, you know, for example, even, like, my own family situation with my cousin Ronald, it's just, like, I understand during Katrina, it was difficult. And I understand that, you know, they were in a situation that they had never been put into. But I also understand at my job, if I do something that caused somebody bodily harm, I have to be punished for what I have done. And whether that's like, you know, I lose my job, that's the situation. The problem is that these people sometimes do not lose their jobs. And there is a, you know, oh, I feared for my life or whatever the cause may be. Um, and it's just like, well, if you fear it so much, why the hell do you have this as a job? If you're not mentally able to deal with this situation, then you should not have this job. You know, and, uh, you know, and even again, it's, it's the fact that, you know, even in that one situation, the reason why I always go back to it, because it's something that happened to my family personally, but it's just the fact that he was mentally disabled. There was no one in the crowd that he was in who had a gun on them. They all were checked out. I had another cousin who was wrongly put in jail in that same situation. And, you know, obviously he, you know, luckily, you know, he got out because, you know, they realized that the situation that they lied, but again, they did not serve the full time for the crime they committed. You know, like we all make mistakes, but if you make a mistake so bad that you actually take someone's life, no matter if you're a police officer or just a citizen, you should be held accountable for the actions that you've done. We are not in a position to play God or whoever you believe in. That is not our position in this world to take someone's life. You don't have a say in that. That is not your position. And that's the problem. It's just that they are militarized so much that it becomes a point that you are afraid to even walk out your door. The fact that you have to take the gun off of you and put it in your in your glove department because you don't want to have a gun on you it's terrible that's not why you should the fact that you have to have a gun in the first place because you're black i mean you know what i mean you have to have a gun because you got to protect yourself period i I can't trust i can't trust anybody i can't trust that's just i I own the firearm because like you know i can't just right you can't trust john q public right you know whoever whoever it is um, and that just speaks as how we have not really elevated much as human beings. We have iPhones, but we have not really gone past some of those subtle animal phases. And I did, I've done security in many facets in my life. Uh, my most recent position, I was, I was working at a, a hotel in downtown New Orleans. And when I, when I tell you, it's like, 1100 rooms in that building just probably on one side alone and or just in the whole building let's say it's 1100 rooms and you can fit let's say two to four people in each room you're talking about every big event mardi gras um uh, uh, um, um bayou jazz classic fest, you're talking fest, about sugar quarter ball fest. jazz fest french quarter fest i'm seeing thousands upon thousands we got some training from one from from a couple of officers who came down and helped us with escalation de-escalation we literally went through that training i have to ensure that whatever moves i make i have to be I, my peace can't get broken i've been called everything under the sun by people who are sober at eight o'clock in the morning nine o'clock in the morning and drunk at that same amount of, at that same point in time yeah i can't do something improper and hurt somebody. They tell us, hey, listen, if you do have to put your hands on somebody, make sure that they hopefully can live through the situation. I don't have my keys on me, but I keep a first, I, I keep a CPR mask on me because I was CPR trained. I was also trained on the uh, automatic, automated defibr- defibrillator devices. So if I do have to subdue somebody, they make it through that situation because the judicial systems carries out punishments. I don't. I'm not a judge. This isn't a movie. This isn't Judge Dredd. I don't get to hurt anybody. Yes, they're so going to look at me like that, a Albert. cop, but I, you know. You're right. I'm not. You're right on not being a judge. And let me tell you, that man who kneeled on that man's neck 
George Floyd, that man was not a judge. And, you know, presumption of innocence in this country, everybody's innocent until proven guilty. So no matter what was going on with that man, even if he was resisting arrest, that does not give anybody the right to take away someone's life. Because to begin with, nobody asked for this life. It is a gift and we must make the most of it. Whether that's today, tomorrow, whether you ask for forgiveness for everything that you've done bad in your life, because I have seen white people today say, holy shit, I've done some bad things. I wanna repent. I wanna change my life. I'm like, good for you. Because you know something's wrong and you know that the actions you did in your past were not justified because of what you felt inside. You did it because other people pressured you to do it because you were raised that way. All right, and that goes into a whole different subject of just generational racism. You know, I will say it is a blessing to see as we get older, we see more and more people of, you know, white, the white persuasion, they go, yay. I know I was raised this way, but this is like hella wrong and I shouldn't do this or I shouldn't think this way or, you know, read a book and I'm just like, oh, damn, I have been taught lies. And while I am truly thankful, thankful for that, you know, there's also just like, even right now, watching the demonstration and the protesting and seeing so many white faces in the crowd, it's almost just like, well, damn, thank you, because my ass is tired. <laughs> My ass is tired of fighting. My ass is tired of talking to people online. My ass is tired of going, oh, well, you know, this is my point of view of a situation and trying to prove how I feel. And even, just, like, you know, it's, it's tiring. It's so fucking tiring. Even like in a professional workspace and someone doesn't like a thing you say because you're not like, I, I hate to say it, but fucking yeehawing just to make them feel a certain type of way. And when you are like educated or you speak a certain type of way, all of a sudden, they don't like you, and you're not good at what you do. And then on top of that, you know, then from that point, it's just like, well, I don't want this person around me because I don't like them. And then you have to fight with your supervisor and make try to make them understand. But since they're not of your race, they can can never possibly understand the feelings that we get when people come at us in a certain way, in a certain manner, and now you're fighting with your supervisor and you're fighting with the person at the table or whatever it is you work. And then it's always, and all of a sudden, just like, you know what? I don't even care anymore. Like after a while, like you just become like, so blah to the situation because the only way that you can survive is to just be blah. Because you can't win on, on either side unless you, it, it, it's, it's just so much. And I know like the hour and a half that we've been, we've been talking or an hour and some change at this point does not even crack the surface. No. <laughs> you know, it doesn't even crack the surface of everything. It's a, first, that, it's a scratch. We need it. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm happy. I'm so, I'm super, super thankful for you guys just even trying to have this conversation, you know, and, and, and even now it just shows me how much more we need to talk because it's just like, there's an anger that is inside me. And it's just like for anger. so long, you there's have to suppress it. That's why you we're have, here. No, absolutely. But, you know, after a while, like, you have to suppress it. Like, you, you, if you want to make a living and take care of your family, a lot of times you just have to deal with the bullshit. But after a while, you're like, why do I have to put up with the bullshit just to make a fucking living? Like, why don't you just hear me? Like, why don't you see me and see that I'm upset? And, um, and, you know, sometimes, you know, you can have a situation when you're damn near in tears because someone has insulted you. I had a guest at, you know, I work in a service industry for the people who don't know. And, you know, I had a guest at an old job that I had that said, oh, you know, he was talking to somebody else at the table. They said, oh, it's fine, you know, as long as you don't live in Niggerville. And it was at, and I'm just like, wow, really? Like, really? This, this is what we gonna say, really? You know, I have like, a question. I have a question for Emily. Yeah. Um, Emily, um, my parents were there. I was adopted and they were white. So I'm assuming your biological parents are white. Am I correct? Okay. They had this conversation with me because they just felt the need to have it. But I'm wondering if they had it with you. That when it became to the age of dating, 
did they ever speak to you about you dating um, a black person? No. And no, they didn't. And some of that was because of my personal family history. I had a, I had a, uh, I had a father who was very controlling, who is very controlling. And so, um, dating anyone was a problem with him. Um, they never singled out any particular person or, um, or race or background or anything like that. It was just, my family was just very controlling in general. So that's my experience. My experience was not like that, unfortunately. Um, even though my parents were very accepting of me, they were not all the way accepting of, and they may have just been joking or whatever, but it didn't seem like it at the time. You know, and, I, and, and they may watch this video, but they know what they did. And I hope that they, you know, don't think that way anymore, but some of the words that I've that I heard out of their mouths it's just not worth repeating first of all but secondly it's just the fact that they had to tell me those things because they were feeling some sort of way of trying to involve themselves with my personal you know intimacy or whatever you know well, Ruby, I think when it comes to that you know it's one of those situations where you're just like I'm not racist but you know it's one right. of those like type of situations like you can do this, but don't get too dark, you know, like, you know, that's still like, you know, what do they call it, like, microaggression, or like, you know, just like, even being passive to a certain way, like, I'm going to say what I want to say, but I'm not going to truly say what I want to say, but you know what I mean. Right. It, when, for, for me, when I hear st stuff like that, and when I've gone through, no, I haven't really gone through too much of that. You, you get the colorism thing every now and again when you yeah. date certain people. Ah, you're too dark. Uh, you're pretty you know, for you a black girl. You're right, pretty for a dark you know, skin girl. You're pretty for a dark skin girl. Don't y'all experience the same thing when y'all date? Do do? Because I've yeah. heard people talk about get it. even their own people. They'll be like, "Why are you dating a white girl? Like, what? You know how they are. You know they don't. They don't even season their chicken and stuff like that. And it's just like you know they're joking, but but it's not really joking. You know, right. You know, that's definitely some, like, people, I think, on both sides of that fence when it comes to even, like, Black people, you know, not being too cool with interracial dating or marriage or something like that. And I think part of that is the fact that there's, like, a distrust, you know, in that community. Like, how do I know for sure that you fund me? Which, trust me, I went through it. My husband is white. I went through it to a certain point, you know? You know, I had a, a great uncle who was just like, you couldn't find a good Black man? It's like, well, damn, like I picked him for a reason, you know, like know that I, I knew who was the right person for me. And, you know, we are in a very happy, very loving relationship. And I'm very thankful that my parents accept him and his mom accepts me. And we're very, we're very lucky that we have that on both sides. But I do understand what you're talking about. There's definitely like a distrust from the black community when it comes to people outside of the race. And then there's also you know, just to be honest, just hard hitting racism from the white side when like, mm, don't date that black person. So it kind of comes from both angles. But something, something when, when that hits for me, I, I kind of related to things that I went through when I was going through anger management when I was younger. And one of the things my counselor would tell me is like, when it comes to things outside of yourself, like outside of what I can physically you know, control how it happens, what I say. I can control how I present myself. If I somebody doesn't get my point, I can reiterate it in another form or fashion. Um, we can't, I can't stop somebody from being prejudiced. I, I, I can't think that far because that's getting, that's me. I, for me, it, it, it starts to anger me because it's like, I, what does that look like? Now I'm trying to make choices for another person. I can't control another person's life. That, that freaks me out because they're not that, that, that like like Emmy was saying, just having somebody who's like, I, I know you probably know how it feels to have somebody just try to control your existence and your movements. You know, right. I don't want to do that to somebody else. If you hate yeah. me, you can hate me. Right. I don't care, but do not interfere exactly. with my ability to move. So it's like when I hear these conversations, it's like, man, yeah, you're all right. These people don't need to hate you for any given reason. It should be based on can you do 
or can you not do something? You know, okay, you're very good at making airplanes. You need to be an aviator. That's amazing. If you, if that person wants to be an aviator, boom. But if they want to be an aviator, pace people, let them hit them. I just, you can make your money, but don't make the airplane crash when the plane is full of people you don't like. I mean, that's an interesting perspective, honestly, L. Like when you really think about it, you know, we talk about, you know, haters and hatering and all this shit. And it's just like, you know what? You know, people have said for a long time, I'd rather you be straightforward and in my face about the fact that you don't like me mm-hmm. than you smile in my face and then put a knife in my back because you don't like me. So that's kind of like the idea of what I get from what you're saying. Like, yeah. I'd rather you be straightforward, which to a certain point I respect, you know? Like, for example, David Duke, very known grandmaster, white, white supremacist, KKK leader, you know? You don't like black people. Totally get it. That's cool. Stay in your lane. But then you have people who have this in their head, oh, I totally love black people or people of color. But then in, you say these really like passive aggressive racist things. So, no, I get what you're saying. The, the non, I see well, here, non- here's, my opinion, here's my opinion on that. Um, I understand there's KKK members and there's Nazi, neo-Nazis and all that stuff. And some people do harm them and some people don't. And the reason why I believe that we should also be um, talking and having conversations with these people is because I live in a more spiritual point of view. If you look at a Buddhist, they do not um, condone evil. They don't, they don't hate it. They don't feel anything towards it. If anything, they do the opposite. They welcome evil because evil is a needy and greedy thing and so if you build a wall we have seen in our past that walls don't do anything they don't do anything good for any sort of history so instead of building a wall the the buddhists um, welcome and they offer gifts to the evil spirits because they are trying to convert the evil into um at least a meteor or a, a more um, kind of like neutral um, spirit. Because if you have more neutral, then you're likely to pull them into the light than you are into the darkness. So when you accept a KKK clan or whatever, um, don't accept them as um, hatred because that's what they want you to feel because that's the reaction that they're trying to get out of you. Accept them as a conversion of conversation, a conversion of, of how can I learn from you and how can you learn from me? And why do you feel this passionate about that? Why do I feel this passionate about that? Let's learn from each other because that's where we break the barriers. We start knocking down walls. We start being the wrecking ball because we're opening Trojans and we're opening Pandora boxes and we're, we're seeing these things come to life. And when we witness that in relationships, we have things like these these conversations you know what i mean and i get that especially like from a spiritual like standpoint no not saying but at season. the end of the day they're not trying to talk to my and l's black asses at all like i'm just gonna be honest <laughs> they is not trying to talk to us that's but you know i'm sorry but at the end of the day I hear what you're saying, but they're not trying to talk to us. It was it was just an example of just my new my <laughs> I, I, have to go over more my new. But, you know, but, like, I, I, like I would love to have a conversation, but at the end of the day, I'm just like, how can you listen when you have so much hate in your heart? You know, that, that, that blocks the ears because you can't hear what I have to say. That's the conversation so that you need to have with someone who you know, you respect, you love, who might think a little bit different from you, who can sit you down and be like, hey, look, uncle, cousin aunt whoever and be like hey look this is why i think you're wrong and that's how that conversation starts but i don't think that starts with us because at the end of the day you're not trying to hear me like See, you're not. And I, I agree with that completely because the words are not going to reach them you know i don't have that complexion for the connection as they say right you know I mean, that's, that's where case, people like King actually would have did his job but exactly. this, didn't work. this is this is where i fall um 
in the ignorant side because I didn't think of that, you know, I, cause I'm not in that position. So I wouldn't know. But when you say that now it, it makes me step back and I'm like, okay, well maybe that's not a point we can do because obviously well, we wouldn't be in these predicaments in the first place. It's possible because people like us have these conversations and it's possible because we have people with different temperaments, but adults have to want to learn something. Children can be taught because they, they, they're empty vessels. They know nothing. They have to learn the world from the adults. So if they get mm-hmm. filled with the wrong thing, you have to refill them some kind of other way. But, but the only way you can do it is if you break through all of the other stuff. Those people got to want to do it. You have the desire to want to be a mediator and talk and, and try to speak to that side of things. Do that with the ones who actually are willing to kind of listen. They might have to be put in a situation but maybe they end up with a black grandbaby or something like that. Or, right. you know, they might end up with a coworker that somebody saves their life or just might, they might be having a bad day. But one of y'all end up, I might do it. And they might be more effective. You might be way more effective to really get them to sit down and listen to what you're saying. And if you can teach them, please teach them. And if they come out of it, then that's fine. But for the ones where the words can't reach me, I understand where your line is drawn, that is fine. And if you decide to do whatever, then I have to deal with you however, however you need to be dealt with. If you need to pay, however you need to pay. Because you don't do something wrong without a consequence. You know, you can't do and hurt somebody, whether it be overt or inadvert, like, or, or like not, or, or what's the, covertly. You know, you're trying to do all of that under the deep-seated, under rude stuff like, oh, let's go change these voting laws. So if you can't read this, or if you don't have this, or if you're not in this right tax bracket, all that other stuff that they try to do that they always complain about as well, because it's the same thing that they concern themselves with. It's the first thing that they, hey, we shouldn't do this. Then you still do it anyway. The, the abusers, I can't expect that kind of freedom from an abuser. But you have the desire to tease somebody. That's why that even, at least the outfit, it even came to your brain. You know, to say, okay, hey, you know, these people need, we need to teach them better. Yeah, we can. But the only people who can really talk to them are the ones that they're going to listen to. Because right. I can tell you a thousand times, hey, man, don't do that. You're going to hurt yourself. Eh, whatever. And then when you hurt yourself, what am I going to do? But the, the, the concept of power is, is, is it's a very, very fragile one because it requires complete and utter agreement. We have rules. We have police forces. We have laws for a reason. Humans don't like disarray and confusion. We don't like that. We got out of the, we got out of living, quote unquote, in the wild a long time ago. Yeah. Okay. Monuments have been built that are still standing. We stopped doing this a long time ago. You know what I'm saying? So we have to have some, some structure. But when you see people at your job and it's like, hey, you know, they're doing this, it's easy for them to stop. When, when they had the I can't breathe shirts with the NBA. I understand that. You know, that's good. That's symbolism. You know, you're showing that, hey, we're all unified, but it would have been much more effective if it, it would, between that and that David Stern situation. You know how effective, effective it would be if all of them said, no, I'm not playing. What you going to do? Um, yeah, and I Honestly. agree with that. I mean, they're kind of doing that. Well, I'm hoping people will follow through. I mean, you know, words are one thing, but actions are totally different. But, you know, even just people saying, you know what, let's just take all the black kids out of like, certain colleges put them on the hbcus you know it's one thing when you're like saying like i demand equal rights because it's all it is just asking for asking for equal rights and being treated the same way you know my white counterpart would be treated that's all i'm asking for i'm not even asking for like 40 acres in the mood i just want to walk out of my house and know that i would not be stopped unjustly and killed before i can go home that is all i'm really asking for and for everybody in my family and the children I one day hope to have called, without the fear of thinking American. that they cannot walk this land freely that we deserve to be in. Because this is the only country we know. Stop, you know, that's the only thing we know is America. Because this is where we have been for the last couple, whatever, 100 years. You know, that's all I'm asking for. And it just seems like, you know, if we, like, I don't know how to ask for people to listen at this point. You know, do we take all of our football players out of the NFL and put them in a whole different league? Do we take our college kids and put them in HBCUs? Like, do we stop going to Taco Bell and Wendy's because they give them money to Trump? You know, like, what do we do? Like, what do you we do? You do all of that. The, the people to listen. 
I agree. I, you do all of that. You have to do right. everything. When they say you, all when, you, you, when you enact change, it comes from the top down and the bottom up. You have one to do person, it. When I was punished, when I was punished as a kid, right. When I was punished when I was a kid, you lost everything. Right. You didn't get any kind of, uh, oh, you know, free time. No, no. So when you talk about, okay, how do you enact change? Easily. For me, I've done this. I've been doing this for years personally. If I see a brand that's doing something that I don't like, I'm not going to go participate with buying them. I'm not right. getting involved with that. I have and no you know, reason to. Years, to piggyback on that, we destroyed people's reputation and their careers and celebrities. We've destroyed celebrities. We've destroyed their whole lives because they said one thing wrong. There's Roseanne Barr. There's Paula freaking Cooker, whatever, the butter lady. You know what I'm talking <laughs> about? Paula, Paula Dean, Paula, Paula Dean. Dean. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But for some reason, we the butter lady. <laughs> the butter lady. For some reason, we're not holding our president accountable. You know what I mean? We're not destroying his career. You know what I mean? Don't, don't buy anything that's endorsed by him. Don't. You know what I mean? And that's exactly you're right. Don't go to Wendy's. Don't go to Taco Bell. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, they're cheap. Guess what? You can cook ramen noodles at home. You know what I mean? And then, to take you back off that point too about like you know just taking it like taking it all out like if you're getting punished like take it all away and that's what is had been really heartening to see like with the protest over here is that I think a lot of the times like in the past we've gone in we've made demands and they've been like yeah we'll get around to some of it here's this right now and give us crumbs basically and from what I'm seeing now this time is people are like no you will meet every fucking demand Yes. and we're not going to stop until you meet everything and it's like you know it's sad sometimes that's got to be like a zero-sum game like this but well, well it definitely has to happen yeah we rebound we rebound it comes back because you know what you're going to do you're going to find a new job in a new industry and some other person who owns something that actually gets supported because they do right like you said we it's a capitalistic society we are a popularity society baby covid just so happened got, there's all kinds of applicational jobs right now there's, so. there's, there's everything and then like with the athletes okay you don't want to not support your black athletes i get it because that's part of the upper echelon of of, of, of of you know they have the money they have the funds they have the exposure fine you know what you do find out what their brand is buy directly if if if, if alvin kamara has a brand or if LeBron has a brand. Even if you, you know, you have your misgivings with Nike and all of that stuff, whoever you want to survive, uh, uh, um, um, support, find out. It's so easy to find out who owns certain franchises. Oh, you have a couple of Five Guys franchises. Go to those specific ones because they are fun specific people. If it's now, the whole company that's doing that? something, cut, cut them off. To piggyback on that, there was this comedian, I can't remember her name, but she's got like a squeaky, naily voice. She's got curly red hair. But she said, if you ever want to hurt Trump for anything that he has ever done to us, just don't buy any of his stuff. Don't, don't donate any money. Don't do anything. Don't retweet. Don't, retweet. don't do anything. Just burrow him out. That's yeah. the best way. That's any, anytime you see a supporter, anytime you see a supporter, block them. Mm -hmm. Just cut them out of your life. You, just you got to ignore them. I, I work in IT every single click, every single day, monetize everything. That's part of marketing. You know what I'm saying? I can't, I can't, I, I can't make you not spend money. Their job is to make you spend the money. Right. I, it's your own job to know, you know how to read, you know, you've made it past third grade, you know, math, you know, adding, subtracting, it doesn't make sense for you to go spend money. Don't spend money. I, I, I have a size 13 shoe. I've been wearing this since sixth grade. I didn't buy Jordans like talking about it because that stuff was expensive and I am a child. So it's the same thing with this. If, if, if Facebook isn't doing right, if you don't feel like, hey, add all your friends, hey, get their phone numbers, mm -hmm. get their emails, go find another app to use, find something else. It, it, another app will get developed. They have startups every single day. You will find another option. They will find another avenue. Don't retweet those clowns. You see, oh man, did you hear what so-and-so said? I'm gonna see probably see it on the news. I might see it on on C, uh, C span if I go check C span out. But past that, I'm not retweeting that. Why? Because he's like he might get ad revenue off that. He's getting exposure and attention off that. He's a troll. I don't have no. I'm ignoring you. The worst thing you can do with a man like that and and it, 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 is ignore him because that's what he wants. He wants attention. Right. He does. You know. People like him. And people like him. Just you know what? I'm not. 
you know, it'd be a waste. Of, it'd be a waste of time for you, you know, to to expend expend your energy on focusing on the individual. And that, and that's the only thing I can really think about. It. It's like asking your abuser to stop abusing you, and however they abuse you, you cannot ask for your abuser to stop doing that. You have to you have to get them to understand. Hey, I, I have been in a domestic abuse relationship. Let me tell you, you, you're you know right. what I'm talking about. You got to take it away. I have to either leave, I have to cut you out of this situation. I have to do something. Now, people talk about, well, what, how, well, when do you, when you draw those lines, when do you come back? You may never. You can't. I, I lost $10,000 just because I, I had to face the fact that either these $10,000 was worth more than my life or I was going to be beat, beat to death. And I was just like, you know what? You can have this can't, money. I don't, I don't care. It. You know what I mean? It was a car, you know, I, I could have sold the car and got money, but at that point, you, you, you have to go survival mode. And that is exactly what we're doing. We're going right. survival mode. We are all pumped with adrenaline and you just try to brainwash us with this whole um, stay indoors because you're not going to get COVID, but that didn't help. People still got infected. I, yeah, people I had still it. touched each other. People still kissed each other. People still hugged each other. People still touched the same keypad you just touched. People, Wait, you know what I mean? L, you said you had it? Yeah. No. I lost uh, 25 saying, pounds. It's probably already been through us. I'm saying. No, no, no. I actually was diagnosed. I actually had COVID. I actually, oh, wow. I actually had it, and I, was, I lost 25 pounds in five days. Wow. That's crazy. I didn't have the respiratory issues, but like I'm talking about it, that that stuff's a whole nother level. And see, and that's something that I, I I noticed too. There's a lot of people just problem solving skills. Like common sense is not a flower that grows in everybody's garden. And that's another thing right. about a lot of this stuff. You know, you have a lot of these people who I like they that. may not even be <laughs> feel free. There's a lot of these people who I have to be flower. honest with myself. The world has so many You're not facets lying. to it. I don't know if some of these people are just dumb as a box of rocks. You may not be racist. You're just dumb. And I can't help that you're dumb. I'm sorry. You're dumb. But it's fine. You, you're dumb. Okay, let me, I, I have to focus on, okay, the people who actually hate me, the people who kind of hate me but don't realize they hate me, the people who don't hate me, and the dumb people. It's like, you're just dumb. You know, ignorance could be correct. Stupidity is down there to the bone. That's ingrained in you. Yeah, that's not even genetic. That's taught. That's not even. I mean, that's not even taught. That's genetic. You know what I'm saying? That's a that's a that's a skill issue. So, I, you know, them. What do you even do with them? You just hey, hopefully it's, they it's don't hang around with the wrong dumb people. Capacity because let me tell you, there's no such thing as a dumb person because our, we all have the same amount of um, Manila, which is um, I mean the I forget what this. Janella or whatever, which is the brain cell that holds memory. The matter, yeah. Anyways, um, so that cell, we all have the same amount, right? So Thanks. if I saw a blue apple the same way that you saw a blue apple, and we both agreed it was blue, but for some reason you didn't believe it was an apple, and mm. I believed it was an apple, you know, are you dumber than me? Yes, you are. But I'm also dumb because I didn't share that knowledge with you. So I didn't tell you, hey, I didn't help you understand this is an apple. Yes, it's blue because someone dyed it that way. Oh, how did, how did it get blue, you asked. And then that's why I say someone dyed it that way. It may, it may take once or twice to, to get you to understand that this is a blue apple. But that's just an example of saying, you know, we're at fault for leaving the people that are dumber behind too because we have to help them too because these people are the reason why we're in this predicament because someone chose to to be ignorant. Someone chose that because they strongly believed that their their knowledge was 100% real and that what they believed was correct. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, I, I hear I, that, but I feel like there's also like a choice of assimilation. Like, you know, you can decide, oh, I'm just gonna do what I wanna say, or, you know, you can go, oh, that's what that is? cool my bad i didn't know that you choose to assimilate different things into your mind or you just right. go on your own little marching band and be like nope i know what i know and that's just it so that, that's also like that's on that person too it doesn't make them stupid it just mean that you chose to live in your land of the blue apples or the blue whatever like you chose that yes you're right you're absolutely right but see you can't justify that unless you've tried first so the moment that you've tried 
and you know that that person is stubborn and they don't want to conceive to be different any other way, then at least you can rest assured that you've done all you can on your part. Because that's what life is about, is, is that exchange of energy in and out, in and out all the time. Every interaction, everything that you do in your life is always going to be about a balance, always going to be an interaction, what you take, what you give, always, no matter what you do. It's always a numeric system. How much you take, how much you give, all that. I, I, I can agree with that. Um, I, I like what you were saying with the assimilation um, because I, I feel like throughout society, dumb has always, like the lack of intelligence has, has always been kind of like cool. You know, you, you see it in our culture all of the time. You know, you might follow the little, like the protagonist of the movie or the story might be the kind of like, oh, you know, it's the nerdy kid. Oh, he's kind of the geek or she's kind of the dweeb, you know. But who's the popular kid? The one that's not really that bright. It's always the dumb jock. It's always the dumb blonde. It's always the mm -hmm. dumb this. It's always the, you know, it's always, you know, you know, you, you, you can even see that in some religions that it's always. always right. They, learn. America it's always, has glorified that. Yes. C's yes. get degrees. You don't need to be that smart to get money. You don't need to be that bright. You just need to get people to believe this or think this. And it's like, you know, it, it's cultivated as though, you know, you don't need to push that hard. You know, I've, I've, I've hung out a lot of the stuff that we see today, like, like you talk about Will Smith seeing stuff being filmed. This is information that I've learned from going to the library. The library was Google. You know, they didn't stop from going right. to read books. And people say, well, they, they put what they want in those books. They don't lie to themselves all of the time. People ain't gonna always lie to themselves. You have to read everything. And then you use your common sense, which once again, we know some people's gardens are barren. <laughs> But use your common sense and say, okay, this makes sense for me. You know what I'm saying? And even though, you know, I can't judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree. You know what I'm saying? When you start talking about your own survival instinct and what, what makes what makes sense for you and what you're willing to put up, when you look at your flow chart to life of what you're gonna deal with, what you're not gonna deal with, you know, you gotta, yes, you do have to individually make that up for yourself. When you see an entire group of people that's like that, it behooves you to stay away from them because they're not healthy. They're not good for you. And people say, well, but they have money. But they have things. They do stuff. And it's like, no, that's not how it works. Take it back on, on money thing. I, I saw a simulation. Um, it's called 100 Humans. It's on Netflix. It's an actual documentary. And it's three scientists. They get together and they have 100 volunteers. In this simulation, they had a group of 50 people and a group of other 50. They divided the groups. Now, the first 50, they were paid to do a certain job, was to build a um, sculpture out of ramen noodles or um, spaghetti, whatever it was. And then they gave the other group, the other 50, the same situation. But they weren't going to give them money. They just said it was a competition, whoever got the best one. And that's it. They didn't say money. They didn't say what they won. None of that. And you saw that in the first group that was getting paid, there was so much frustration, there was so much flustering, there was so much chaos and just pressure, trying to build this the best of their ability because they wanted to win the, the money, you know? And then you had the other team that was just having fun. There was, nobody was racing nobody, even though it was a race, nobody raced each other. They just had fun, took their time, built their structures and they had a great time. And now they, they announced each winner and then they revealed to both of them that this team was getting paid and this team wasn't. And did they show why? Yes, they showed why. They said that in a society that is driven by self-innovation and pure um, support can be more innovative than a society that is pressured through social class and um, income, which is our America, you know what I mean? Yeah. The, we, we invented the currency. The petrodollar would be nothing mm -hmm. if it wasn't for America. Well, I don't know we, about that. Are, I mean, technically, I mean, we're so powerful be because we, different country we, we control that. But just to get back on track, because I just want to, you know, kind of start to wrap this up as it's getting close to 
you know, late time period. Um, when it comes to organize, like organizing different things, especially when it comes to like, hopefully a change in America that we would see with this case going forward. I mean, I'm pretty sure like at this point, we've already seen so many different cases go forward, whether it's Trayvon Martin or, you know, uh, Eric Garner, you know, just like just going forward and knowing that, you know, for the most part, they don't ever really get charged. But I hope from these demonstrations, there will be a reformation of the way how the police use their force. So I guess the question is, how do we organize to actually change the laws? That is the law of the land, because obviously the land, the law of the land isn't working. So I think that's the question I'm going to pose. And then from there, we're just going to go ahead and close up. Which I know that's a very hard question to ask someone. Um, so can you elaborate on that question just a little bit more? Absolutely. So as I mentioned before, you know, there has been cases among cases of people of color being killed and you go to court and you say, oh, I quote unquote fear with my life. Oh, I thought I saw a gun. Oh, I, you know, whatever the excuse may be, you get trial by a jury of your quote unquote peers and then you get to walk scotch free and then it happens again. And again, and again. So the question is, how do we start to hold our police officers accountable for the actions that they do, but also how do we also go forward when it comes to changing the facts that our police officers have been militarized? Like we have to understand that, you know, we've all seen pictures on Instagram and Facebook and they have full on military regalia, but then we also have nurses who are wearing paper fucking hef they wearing hefty bags. That don't make sense. We're fighting the virus right now, but you have police officers who are better geared to do their job than nurses and doctors. So how do we re start like a reform? Because even if let's say that this case come to pass and let's say this dude, Derek, whatever the hell his last name is, because I haven't even cared to learn his name, to be honest with you, um, actually gets charged for the death of George Floyd. Okay, cool. So how do we go forward? Because to be honest, him being charged is not enough. We need to make sure that this doesn't happen again. So that means well, if this doesn't happen again, we need to have longer training when it, other than five weeks, we need more than five weeks to train a police officer. We need to make sure that perhaps, you know, they get training in different areas. Like again, dealing with people with mental illnesses, whether it's bipolar depression or whether it's autism or whatever it may be that someone is dealing with, if they are, off their meds or something is wrong, if they're like wooden something that you quote unquote is a weapon, your first choice should not be a gun. That is not your first choice. You should be able to help them calm down before you put them in cuffs to make sure they're okay and then go forward. Like wherever it may be, we need to make sure that our officers are trained medically to like handle different situations. Even when it comes to people who are suicidal or wherever it may be, that doesn't mean because they have a gun to their head, that mean you need to shoot them to de-escalate a situation. How do we make sure that moving forward in all 50 states, we know for sure that our police officers will not go to their, oh, I'm, I, I was scared for my life, so I shot them. That is no longer an excuse. That is dead. That can't be an excuse anymore. Like, we need okay, to make sure moving forward, that's not okay. Well, I... Um... I, I wanted to save my 20s to just live my life and do the best of my ability. But, you know, when you talk about these things, I can't help but to try to do the best of my ability to try to seek more knowledge and do the best of my um, ability to um, progress in a more positive way because these are topics that are just very hard to talk about. But in my opinion, what I think is um, we have to start with what is causing these cops to do these things? If it's, if it's a more personal issue, then we must address that, you know, personally. Now this all costs money. Whatever change we do, it's gonna cost money. And guess who pays for that? All of us, all of us, all, all four of us that are studying and talking about this right now. Whatever change is gonna happen in the system today, from this day forward, is gonna come out of our pockets. 
whether that's having to pay for more training, whether that's having to pay for better armor, for better simulations, for better combat, for, for better um, obstacle course, whatever they need to help them deal with aggression or whatever therapy, that's all gonna be paid for with us. So why are we spending all that money on that system when they should already be put to the best of their ability by going through the academy that they already go through? Now, this is where I answer my own question. I say, stop that. Stop um, uh, taking money from these people who are trying to go to school to become a police. Any kind of first responder, whether that's uh, ambulance, MIT, or anything, that should all be free. And, I, and the reason why I say it should all be free is because we are spending too much money trying to capitalize people dying. That's being focused on way too much. And by that, I mean like a $5,000 ambulance, a uh, freaking uh, $3,000 police call for a domestic abuse and all that. That all has to go away because we're putting the money in the wrong system. We should be putting the money in their pocket because the reason why I say that is because nobody that I know hates their job who is getting paid very well. Nobody. And now let me tell you this, this is a problem with police. They feel like because they're putting their lives out there, they should receive free healthcare just like a soldier. They should be receiving the same amount of pay as a soldier who goes over combat and fights for their freedom. And, and they should be paid when they are discharged the same way. Now, I understand why they think that because like you said earlier, Tasha, we have militarized our police system. And fine, then if you wanna think that way, then we must address the issues the same way as if you're gonna go and do cocaine here and now and then, you will be automatically terminated from the police system. Any kind of little F up should be the, treated the same way like a soldier is treated. So that way they know that the privilege they have by wearing that badge to serve and protect isn't the selfish reasons why they're being there. It's because they're being paid well and because they're being trained well and because they are willing themselves to take that voluntarily and do it themselves and go out there and fight and protect and service. Well, from that standpoint, when it comes to like payment, I can't speak for all 50 states, but at least down here, I can say there are definitely some police officers who are getting paid more than people with a master's degree. That's just being real. And I'm like, you know, if it comes to, you know, we have to up our taxes to a certain point, to make sure these people get trained correctly, I'd rather pay more taxes to make sure I'm alive than pay less. And then I don't know if I'm going to come home at night. So that, I mean, that's just my thought on that, but I hear what but you're you saying. Like to I'm totally okay saying. with you should have more taxes. That's not, that's not your fault because you were born with fault. black skin. You know what I mean? No, I totally understand that. Like I, I know it's definitely not my fault, but you know, if we have to like, fix certain things at the end of the day if i have to pay a little bit more to fix everything i'm still okay with that because i'd rather make sure you that you know this man that man that woman whoever goes home safe and that's another way i have to think about it like we shouldn't have to pay more but if that's the cause to make sure that people live i'm okay with that anyway next person I think my thing is that, like, I, I think it doesn't even necessarily need to be that we need to um, pay more. And I preface this by saying, like, I haven't read, like, everything yet, um, but because a lot of this just came out. Um, but the protesters who came out of here today had their list of demands. And the biggest demand on the top of that list is defund Seattle PD. And I don't think it's to dismantle it, but my understanding is the is the intent is to cut their funding in half. They will need to remove that. Uh, they would need to take out of like their weapon, their military grade weapons that they're using against the people and have that money reallocated into community services um, and community defense um, solutions. So really, that's a very good point. To dismantle that's the pretty cool. But, but to, uh, to reallocate the money that they're using to get these military grade weapons out against people. And, um, yeah. But you know, who should, you know who should be in charge of all that? We should be in charge of all that. Not these people that think that they know what's best for the public because 
they don't see what we see on a daily basis. They don't, they don't deal with the situations that we deal with because uh, like many things in Louisiana that are corrupt and in our political system, these people are sitting on piles and piles of money that we will never in our lives see because they've manipulated the system that way by allocating, oh, let me, let me redirect this money over here. Let me go ahead and get 25% of that. That's what happens, unfortunately, when they do allocate that money in, in different and more productive systems. And sometimes they don't hire the people to proceed with those systems. Well, and, and you know what? And Ruben, I hear that, but I think what it is, because I, I, I agree with you, I, but I think what that means is, is that we have to make sure that we vote the right people to represent us. Because that's how our voices are heard. You know, a lot of times people always talk about, you know, voting for the president and how your vote doesn't matter because of the electoral college. But if you actually vote the right people in house to make that's sure that they it. actually okay. hear what you have to say. It doesn't would... always work that way, unfortunately, because they redraw all the Democratic and Republican maps, and they can manipulate the system to their advantage. That's why I the mean, electoral college is stupid. I was just about to get. I mean, I hope we get that, rid of that, but I'm just saying. Even, oh, even if we all go vote, even if we all go vote, unfortunately, America is corrupt, and they'll oh. just redraw and redraw and redraw and redraw until they get what they want. Well, yeah, see, that's 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 what I was about to get into. I feel like it, there's there's a lot of lack of self accountability and discipline among our our adults. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna use a phrase we've all heard before. Um, to me, you know, there have been coons in uh in in the black community since since Egypt, since there's been what baby coons coons. That's what that you know what I'm talking about. People who yeah. undermine People the black who, community. Yeah, crabs exactly. in the barrel mentality. Crabs in the barrel mentality. Okay, now let's extend that out to more of a national sense. All fifty states. We have a lot of lack of people who just lack the days, but don't really care. And then people who are going to undermine the system. I, I was just looking at some stuff for the Electoral College and everything. Louisiana has eight seats in the Electoral College. Okay. You have to vote in the midterm. You have to vote for your House and your Senate. Now, like you say about the redrawing, the gerrymandering and stuff that they do, that's when you start looking at your city council. You start looking at where you're living and what zip codes you're living in and stuff like that, too. Now, people don't like getting up rooted and stuff like that, but stuff like that has to start being looked at. Okay, what neighborhood am I going to move in? Okay, is everybody going to move in this neighborhood who agrees with me, white, black, or otherwise, so we can make sure that this neighborhood is safe and that we vote in the actual politicians, in the, we actually vote in the judges, we actually vote in the people who are actually going to, one, hold people accountable. It's the first thing that we have an issue with. You shoot somebody. You kneel on somebody like that, you need to be held accountable swiftly. You need to be agreed upon. We need to agree that your Just training was not right. Or you didn't you didn't follow your training. You go straight to the person who trained you. Did he do what he was supposed to do? Nah, he ain't do that. You you have too many officers that have come out and said that these guys didn't do what they were supposed to do. Right. You know, so but they're scared to that, that call that's free. But that's free game. Mm -hmm. We don't need to spend that witness everything. They're scared themselves because they know they built these little squads on purpose because they know that if they have blackmail on you you can't say shit on them too, too, and too put, bad and you, to you a certain still point by list. the same time you choose to be a police officer you don't choose to be black you're just born it you know but exactly. the same way the same way that frat boys um initiate each other is the same way that police do the same thing so as soon as you break this creed is the same the same concept of you turning their back and you betraying them we've seen videos of cops crying in front of protesters saying i'm on your side you can see it in their faces but the cop is like i dare you to say something with the freaking hand on the shoulder on camera saying i dare you to say something go ahead you know what's going to happen to you I mean, he that's... says to him you know what's going to happen to you you go ahead say something and that's sad yeah, we... it's very sad yeah we go through that in that community all of the time and i've i mean i've been called a coon in my face during mardi gras events because i gotta let people in there oh well they don't have whatever wristband and it's like well listen i know what they're here for you know this context is kind of everything you know right but you know we got to make sure we take all of that into account i feel like on the police side those guys need to have 
for for the mental health training to how to deal with the people out in the street, they also need their own mental health training. Guys who come back from the military, come that, back from overseas, post, they need to be reconditioned for. Too, because let me yeah, they need to be reconditioned cops. to this world. So right. those cops need to take out, be taken out, and Some it's of these like cops if that guy are has a discipline from PTSD. Yeah, they're, 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 if you have a guy who has a discipline issue, he's constantly roughing people up a little too much. We need to take him out and sit him down from it. Hey, you, you're, you're costing it because, it, and, it, and this is why we, it comes from all directions. I'm going to make sure I put in my civil rights violation. And I'm also going to put forth a civil lawsuit. Because if I can't get a criminal charge off this officer, I'm going to cost the place money. That Dollars part. make sense. So if you're going to play right. that and game, I have to get the money out of today. the judicial system. We got to sue rioting, we are causing, We are causing all these big corporations, all these colossal companies, money. And they know that. That's why they're ringing on the White House door and saying, you need to go do something about this. Because we gave you this money and you are our president and you're supposed to be doing something about this. They're damaging our stuff. Oh, yeah. whatever. You got to make a insurance. move now. Right. But then on top of that, what's, what's also added is these guys are somewhat militarized. They have equipment, but they're not even using the equipment properly. And they're not being held accountable to moving it, using it properly. And then when you add on top of that, people in the military have to follow things like the Geneva Convention. A combatant mm -hmm. can shoot at you and drop a rifle. When he drops a rifle, he's no longer a threat. You can't shoot him. You can get in trouble for that. That's a war crime. So I why, why the cops problem. get to come home and say, well, I was scared. Your job is scary. Exactly. Your job is frightening, job. Like, no one's taking that away from them. Like, it is a scary job, but you have to be no mentally aware of that to move forward in that type of situation. Mm -hmm. like, you can't exactly. handle it. I want to say something. Like, I, you know, I all the years I spent as like a case manager, you know, I've had people like come at me, like I've had people threaten me, I've had people call me out a name, like every name in the book, and like, did I hurt anybody? No. I didn't hurt anybody. Like, if I... And you had every right to. Yeah, and if I can, if I can deal with that, like, why can't the cops? Why can't they learn? Like, what is stopping them? And why are the they badge, going? Baby, there's this badge thing? that they think gives them power over us for some reason. It's like this psychological thing. There's been studies after studies showing that cops, for some reason, out of any first responder, believe that they have an authority over us. It's psychologically embedded in their training they they are trained that way their power and control i mean you're, you're, you're trained to, to to i guess you could say be be able to handle situations but they tell you you know your peace can't be broken and if you feel like you can't do something anymore you need to be honest with yourself and say hey man listen i'm getting too high strung i need to step away you're not yeah. being weak as a person who's been through anger management you're not being weak you're honestly being, listen i need to go get more control over myself you know, and we know, but if you you're know being racist, that? that's a whole, I can't, you can't train that out of somebody. That's yeah, something you, really you, you, were, you were born and raised and you said, I'm going to go be a cop so I can keep their foot on their neck. We, it's not that we don't need these systems and structures that's in place. We have them in place for a reason, but we need to reduce them, restructure them maybe, and actually hold people accountable and force people to do what they're supposed to do. Yes, raise hell, cause problems. But also at the same time, save their energy for when these ballots. We don't even, with this COVID stuff, all of this stuff going on, how are we doing this election? What's going on with that? How do we make sure that that doesn't get undermined? Because that's something that we need to make sure we pay attention to. And not only that, if you look at the midterm elections, because people I talk about how Obama, Obama didn't do back. anything, he can't do anything if you don't have a backing. The man didn't have I, anybody I in the House Obama of the Senate. Ooh, back. you speaking word. Ooh, boy, you speaking a word right there. Ooh. He didn't have no backing. You he can't no do backing. nothing. Clinton had an entire backing. Bush had an entire backing. Obama didn't have a backing. And he's coming back. Senate. And guess who does have his back this time? Biden. And now um, I'm not for Biden, but if, if, if Obama can get back in office as vice you, president, I am all for that. You're you talking about the unions need the lesser two evils when it comes down to the own choices that we've know, decided that we've right? developed because we have only ourselves to blame. I'm not going to blame everybody else for, for who we have in office, kind of slide off topic for a second, but yeah. we, are, we are to blame. And if we're going to change all of these issues with all of these people getting killed, every single, I, 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 it's, it's hard for me to think about. You know, I see the cops in my back of my review and I'm like, because eh, it's not even just something. that I, I might want, get hurt. I, wanna... I might get hurt. Nothing may happen to them. And then guess what? Even if these guys do, 
because you can see what happened with George Zimmerman, even though he's not an officer of the law, even though he thinks he's one. These people lose their jobs. And what happens? They get hired on at another police force. Right. Or they end up in some private security force. They're still able to feed their family. I get that. Well, they, California they no longer doing that. From getting bullied. And then, Thankfully. That's, you know, you got, you got all these other, but some of these, some of these, all right, you got a CEO that has got $400,000 to just give to Trump. Well, that, they got another billionaire that might need some security detail that feels like, okay, hey, kill that black dude. Listen, you know, I could pay you about, you know, how much no, you some I could pay you that already, a year to just be my bodyguard. Some people were already speculating that George might have been involved with the mafia and they've already, like his net worth was $5 yes. million dollars or something like that. Yeah, he's been they selling were, artwork and stuff for Confederate artwork. The fact, that's not how you kill somebody. You know, even if this man was a criminal, that is not how you do it. You do it through the justice system, like everybody else, judiciary, and all that stuff. You know, you go through all no, that, the court, and everything. Ruby, even that, even that being said, that opens up a whole nother can of worms. Just like, no matter how you live your life, you know, you could have did things when you were 15 years old, you can be 30 years old, and you die by the police. And they're gonna find something you did when you were twelve. Th it that's don't matter. I've it all yes. try to find something to villainize yes. the person who was killed. And to yeah. be honest, it's not fair. And I don't understand that. You know, because they tell you they ask for forgiveness, not permission. And it's like they kill you. It, and then they, they it's like find, what? It's like oh, because you deserved it from two weeks ago. No, what did I do in that instance? Right. I'm like, you know, we all been knucklehead kids because you know we grown now. But you know. If I ran a while when I was 12 years old and, you know, you know, you, you know, you know, whatever you did when you was like 15, 16, 17, 21, whatever, I'm grown. I'm about to be 32 years old. Whatever. Natasha, to piggyback on that, Don't there is a lady no who is, she's 55 years old, right? And she was a mother of six kids when she was like 15 to 19. She robbed a gas station with a toy gun. Now, this is in New Orleans. She's still in jail. And you can go find her, her case. I forgot what her name is. Mama something, they call her. But she's been in jail for the past four decades, since she was 19, whatever. So that's 40 years. And she's still in jail for the fact that she's Black and the fact that it was a toy gun. That's it. No other reason. Because to hold somebody accountable for something that stupid when they were 19 for this long, you know for a fact there is something deeply wrong with our system, something deeply wrong. The fact that we cannot hold compassion and forgiveness like God has mercy on our souls every day, we don't deserve to live on this earth that way. I mean, I can be, I'm gonna be 100 with you. I mean, even in NOPD, and I'm like, I'm thankful that NOPD took a knee, took a knee during the whole protest thing. But hell, you could literally get stopped by the police in New Orleans right now, go, you know, you go to what, what it is, off a of broad and two lane, you get registered, you go through the bag, you know, they take your information, they put your stuff in the bag, you get changed, you go sit in a little locker room, you get changed to your orange clothes, they put you in a van, and you get taken away to whatever jail system they can take you in, and it's literally for a traffic stop, and you could be in that thing for six months, up to a year, and then even some more, even past that. It doesn't even, it, you don't even have to do something. It, it literally could be like, oh, I have my blinker on the wrong way, and I, and I get pulled over, and I get lost in an OPS system. It don't even have to be like I held up a gun, uh, I had a play gun, and I held up a, a convenience store or a gas station. I can literally be leaving my job, forgot to turn my blinker on, I turned the corner, and NOPD got me, and I'm in jail for a couple of weeks. Because trust me, I didn't see it happen. I really no, I strongly have. believe Five it. days and six nights so in Baton Rouge for a ticket. <laughs> they Wait, couldn't, they sent me, I did five days, they sent me to court. They, it was a ticket that I thought I had paid. And then people took me in. They said, oh yeah, you got caught today. I sat in that tank all day. Now nah, you got caught tomorrow. Said that tank, they brought me to the courthouse. Now we got to send you back. You got caught tomorrow. No, man. It, it, yeah. And they will lose you. They had a guy that was in there for two months. Yeah, they will lose you in the system. Two months. ICE lost 1,500 immigrant children. How does oh, we ICE? Already, we already know that, girl. Mm, boy, we know that. That's a whole different subject but for you're a right. whole different view. We got to keep it on the topic. But you're absolutely right. And you know what? I will never know 
that pain, I will never know that pain that, that you have heard of and that you have witnessed simply for the fact that I was not born your skin color. And I never want to experience that. And I say this with 100% passion in my heart. You should never have to worry about anything the moment you step out foot of your house or even in your house in this case, because we've heard of people dying inside their homes, minding their own business. Right. That's a whole nother problem. There's at least four, I can't remember any of the cases, but like, uh, pardon me for using the wrong term, like Brianna Taylor is one of them and several, the no knock warrant thing, that's just a bad thing because I'm sorry. We gotta get rid of that. That's that's just bad Mm -hmm. police work, Mm -hmm. dude. Because if you run into a situation just like that, if I feel like somebody's breaking it, I have too many people in my family that I got to take care of. I'm not about to let somebody just break it in the house. Right. I have to shoot back. You know what I'm saying? You didn't announce yourself as the police. If you're the police, hey, man, I'm going to cut all the lights on. I'm going to open the door. What you got? You got a warrant? Let me read the warrant. Then we go from there. No, but, luckily for this knows. man in Tennessee, the police killed his girlfriend, unfortunately. And then he shot back because he thought they were an intruder, right? Yeah. So then they convicted him for harming a police officer. But then they dropped the charges once um, George Floyd died. This happened a few days after George Floyd died. Mm-hmm. They dropped the charges on him for the fact that the country was being outraged, right? And they didn't want that uh, publicity spotlight. Yeah, they didn't want that spotlight. So not only that, but they didn't charge the cop for killing his girlfriend. No, and they didn't. didn't. They didn't charge anybody who was a part of that or anything. This man went, and now he has a bad tooth on on him with those cops, if you know what I mean. Like, oh yeah, they're gonna be on him every time he gets a chance. Right. Yeah. Right. And there was and a Mexican American gentleman that died recently to too, a few years back, same way. They, they kicked in his door and they killed him. And they was trying to do, not just his neighbor next door, I'm talking about, it was the house across the street. Didn't look the same, nothing. And they kicked this man's door down and shot him in his house. He didn't even have a weapon. You know what I mean? And this is the only person feeding his whole family. These people are dying. The breadwinners are dying, or if it's not even the breadwinner, it's already hard enough. We have enough single parent households. You're creating enough. And now this child has, a, and, and even if it's not a single, even if it's a single parent, they're not even getting co parenting. You're losing an entire branch to your life that you can't even learn from now because of this situation. But that guy's gonna, yes, those cops, you know, I feel bad for the children. The children are gonna probably might, they might get bullied, they may not. They might get heralded as, like, you know, I don't know. Uh, the, these families get, like, George Zimmerman had go, go fund me accounts and stuff. People are donating money. They will come out and support these guys. You know, but these families need support for their legal teams so they can sue these places. You know, I'm, you got to make sure you donate to these, these families to make sure that these families can still bring these kids to college and stuff because these families are going to struggle now because now you have one parent that's gone. They're going right. to need mental health take, uh, uh, counseling and stuff like that because now they got to go through grief. No, right. this other stuff. We need to make sure we're backing up these these families that's getting hurt. I applaud Floyd Medweather because he is paying for the college for these children that Floyd left behind, unfortunately. Right. So I, I and, applaud and that him. takes me to something else. And you know, this probably for the third time <laughs> will be our closing. It's just that um, once we're done. I will make sure that not only do I post the names of the people who I talked about when we first started, but I also will try my best to post uh, different links to different don't places you can donate because there's more ways to protest than just walking in the street. You're more than welcome to have a stand where you can give medical supplies. If you want to have little baggies of food that you want to give to protesters, you're more than welcome to. You know, unfo- you know, we are living in a world where people have different responsibilities and marching in the street is not the only way to support what is going on in our country. So I will make sure that I post links. So if you want to donate to the George Floyd fund or if you want to donate to the Breonna Taylor fund or wherever it may be, I will make sure that that is going to be a link so people can donate because that is very important whether you are trying to make sure that protesters are getting are being bailed out of jail like to be honest this con- this conversation can go for hours on end but we do need to wrap it up and i think we're going to continue again and we will go forward because honestly this is just 
chipping off many, many years of not having a conversation. Like we, I mean, at least when it comes to this country, you know, we can go back to the 1600s. There's been a lot of different things that has been wrong with this country. And I'm just very happy that at least within our generation that we can make the conversation and we can talk and we can be open. But this is going to have to be like a multi-part type of conversation because we just can't have this all in one night. But I do want to make sure that people know that there are different ways that you can donate and you can help and we can come together and make this happen. And I'm going to open up the comments as well. And if you have something to say, please put that, put it there and we're going to continue to move forward. Um, that's pretty much where I'm going to wrap up as, as at this point. But again, I know I said it multiple times, but I just want to say it again. Like I am so happy and so thankful that I have friends that I can talk to who can listen to me, who can be heard, who have things to be said, because we all have different point of views in our life. And I just want it to be known that, again, it starts with us. Like we cannot keep crying for things to change if we don't start with ourselves. It has to start here. And I, I know that what we're doing is right. I know what we're doing is going to make a difference. Like I can feel it in my soul. Like I know this is right. It feels right in my spirit. And this is where it starts. It starts with us and we're going to move it forward. And whether we have to change our government, whether we have to change how we talk to people and make sure that we call people out on their biases, we're going to do it and we're going to make it happen. And this is where it starts right here with us. So again, um, any last words before I close out? <laughs> uh, it if I get a chance, if I need to send it to you, if I can just comment it to 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 where where this is going out at, I mean, I'll I'll try to make sure we get the links for you know the civil rights pages and stuff because if on order for this and being active, the information, the exposure needs to be there because from what I'm seeing, talking to both Emily and you, Rudy, right? Ruby, Ru yeah. <laughs> Ruby, Ruby, like Ruby Red. All right. There you go. There you now. go. Cool. Yeah, it's a lack of exposure. You know, y'all have been exposed to things. You know, you're talking about having race conversations and stuff with your parents. Out. That's, that's nuts, man. And like, you know, y'all didn't have the exposure. So it's like, you know, people need to have the exposure, even on 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 the, on the black side. You know, we gotta have that information out there. So if you see something, you actually can say something. Right, and that's true. Because I mean, whether you know, different descents or whatever your like ethnicity is, we do have different conversations with our parents and our grandparents, you know? Like we all have different conversations. And I think even that is something that we should bring up because, you know, what has been told to you, L, might be a little bit different than what Ruby has heard. You know, that's definitely like, what, what's that saying? If, if you can't use your comb, don't bring it home. We know what that mean. I don't know if everybody else know what that mean, but we know what it mean. That's a conversation that needs to be had. You know, anybody else? Nah. All thank right. Cool. So <laughs> well, guys, again, thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much from the bottom of my heart. Like Anytime. to be honestly, honest, to be honest with y'all, I, I kind of got really, really, really nervous just because I knew that we were coming from different backgrounds and di and I wanted to make sure that everybody had a mature conversation about how we felt, but I knew I picked the right people and I knew that we were going to like talk as mature adults. But at the same time, it does bring my heart some type of joy to know that this has been cathartic, hopefully for all of you guys, as this has been for me, and knowing that we can move forward with these conversations and know that we're going to make a difference. And hopefully, you know, when we decide to procreate and have different little kitties and, you know, we have our little babies, that, you know, they can have a world where we're not still dealing with this, you know. It's been over 50 years since the civil rights movement movement and we're still having these conversations and i just i pray that you know everything that people have sacrificed for us to move forward won't be in vain like i pray that we can move forward and we can all honestly live in a harmonious life but it does start with us all right y'all well, thank y'all so much thank y'all and i hope y'all have a beautiful night good night